Hi guys, how you doing? My name's John from The Machine Shop UK. Um, I want to do a quick review and a sort of whinge about the Feutech G6 Plus gimbal, uh, which I have here. So it comes in, it does come in this rather attractive looking hard case, which is quite nice. It's like a, it's like a hard foam, zipped up, handle, you know, great for carrying it around, which is really good. Um, try and zip it. And it comes well. Take the little accessories. So when I bought this one, I also got uh, a phone mounting system. So that can screw into there. Like so. And then that lets you add a phone onto the gimbal. I've also got a standard GoPro uh, tripod mount. So it comes pretty, packaging is pretty good. So as you can see, you know, it's sat in there quite well, it's all strapped up. There's a little bag there so you can keep kit charge cables or GoPro cables, lightning cables for your iPhone or micro USB for an Android, whatever. So I'll just undo it. And essentially this is what the gimbal looks like when it's, you know, turned off state. You've got your your uh, pan axis, you've got your tilt, and you've got your roll axis on the top there. Um, the actual construction of this thing is really good. Uh, the, you know, it's all it's all metal. It's got a slightly rubbery grip there. Um, in the bottom, this bit unscrews. This is where, when you first get it, you get a nice big, back, like lipo battery cell, which is a twenty six six fifty five amp hour. Pretty good sized battery. The battery lasts about ten to twelve hours. Apparently, I've not had it running for that long yet, but. It's pretty good. All the controls on the front, you've got the standard joystick style. You've got on the back, you've got a rocker switch. So the joystick on that side would allow you to do your your roll and your pitch. I think that's what you call it on the gimbal. Whereas the one at the back, uh, I believe, the one at the back does the tilt, so that makes it sort of move. Whereas the X and Y on the joystick would allow you to pan and then I think that's tilt or roll, I can't remember what the actual thing was. Uh, and then you've got power and you've got a little tiny LED screen, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, you've also got the USB charge port underneath this little rubber gasket. It is splash proof. So, you know, you can set it up and not worry about you, you know, splashing it. Um, but it's got a micro USB charger on the bottom, on the side even, underneath that little rubber gasket. And there's also an extra button on the side there. There's also this little wheel on the side, which is an extra. This is on the G6 Plus. It's this extra little wheel on the side. So um, depending on what kind of camera you've got mounted on here, like for example, if you've got an iPhone um, and you've got it connected to the app, you can use that to control your zoom. So you can hold it and then you just gently zoom in or gently zoom out. Certain cameras can have that feature as well if it's connected to either the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi to the camera. Um, you can also have that control in the uh, the focus or the zoom. You can also set it by pressing it in as well. You can see there, you can press it in. You can also set it so that that acts as a control as well. If you wanted to have two-handed control rather than trying to use the little joystick to have slightly better control, you can assign it to any of the three axes. So you could use it as a very slow pan, for example. Very you know tight control. The actual motion of the thing is, is very good. Um, it does take a few minutes to sort of faff about to set it up because it's designed to work with multiple cameras. Um, it, it does take a few minutes. As you can see now, it's sort of like, obviously there's no camera attached to it, um, but it does take a few minutes to sort of set up and, and, and get it balanced. I know a lot of the gimbals that are designed to fit onto uh, like specifically go onto phones or specifically to keep take the GoPro, like the GoPro um, Karma gimbal. It's all pre-set up and it's all balanced. So you just put the camera in it and off it goes. Whereas this is designed to work with lots of different phones or you know cameras, GoPros, phones, whatever. Up to 800 grams, according to the manual. So it can take quite a, a good. It won't take SLRs. Um, I'm filming this now on a Canon 220 HS. Um, so it would quite happily work with that. Just take the standard, you can see there, it just takes a standard uh, tripod thread. 
Um, so yeah, quite happily take that camera. I've also got my, let me just quickly find my GoPro. It's in my bag. Go. So it'll quite happily sit with the GoPro on there as well. So let me show that fitted and I'll show you the setup that you have to go through when you do this. So these vi this video is slightly different to my normal videos. Normally I'm in my car doing some sort of video every morning. If you've seen any of my other videos. So this is a little bit different. This is my parents' dining room. Soon to change because I've got a new house coming soon. So the uh, scenery has slightly changed. So I'm just attaching the, the tripod mount to the GoPro. Get that nice and square. And then what I'm going to do is fit screw the tripod mount onto there. This it has got the three different axes. You can see the the roll axis there, that actually has a sliding part to it and you tighten it up with this ring. So this ring rotates and it grips this part so it doesn't stop it sliding. Same for the tilt axis, has a sliding part as you can see there and so does the, um, what would that be called, pitch I guess would you call it. You see there it's got another sliding part. There is a fourth which that plate there, if I undo this little clip under here, one way or another, I think it's that way. It might be easier if I use both hands. Hang on. Put my camera down. There we go. Then this plate also slides backwards and forwards to basically send you. What we're trying to do is find the center of gravity on all of the axes and the camera. So the camera can fit. You can see on that plate it's got multiple slots. So the camera can fit the back or forwards or sideways, whatever you need to find that center of balance. So I'm going to screw this on. Gently. There we go. Find the bit where it pinches. And then there's quite a nice, to be fair, the thumb screw underneath, if you can see that if it's in focus. I don't know, I've not got a monitor on this camera. Um, it has got like a little tab which you can use to do the final tweak adjustment. So, to set this up, you can see now it's obviously not at its center of gravity. So to do that, you hold it flat to the floor, and then you can move this around a bit so that it, it looks even. You can see it's starting to look a bit level. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna hold this level, and I'm gonna slide this backwards and forwards until it sits perpendicular to the ground. So the idea being that that's then the center of gravity on that part of the gimbal. It's supposed to be on that side, if I can get it to do it. Okay, I'll slide it a bit more that way. So you can see there, if you can see it, so if I'm holding it like that, can you see how this is starting to look a bit more in the middle? See, that's too far that way, so I'll move it a little bit out. Trying to get it to sort of sit in its, when it's in its center of gravity, also it will, you know, float as such. So, about there. So what I do is the ring on that axis, I just tighten that against there. And that's one axis done. That's what I mean by it takes a few minutes. So you've got three axes or three Axis to think about, but you've got four adjustments and things to make, so just depending on what camera. So, the next one you have to use hold it upright, and what you're trying to do is that tilt, you need that to be straight. So, move it a little bit to the left, still a little bit off, so a little bit more, and yeah, so that's there. Hold that in the middle, tighten that ring up, yeah, that's okay, and then finally. The, the camera one, so this one, what you do is you point the lens up, and you can see how that's trying to go straight down. So if I bring that up, so it's too far that way, a little bit, a little bit further back. You can see that that's holding the lens up right nice. So I'll tighten that ring up. There we go. So now you can see it's all a bit loose. Okay, not sure why. Camera just decided to stop recording there. Bizarre. 
So I'm just checking to see if the see how the camera is slightly wanting to tip forwards. So I'm just going to position it a bit to make it. Obviously, with the with a GoPro, it's got that added axis. Let's make sure that bit's tightened up as well. See how that's sort of trying to roll backwards? That's because of this plate. So if I undo this, if I can remember which way it is to undo something. That way. Okay, so that wants to come back a little bit. So it's always trying to tip forward, so that wants to come back. Yeah, somewhere around there. Tighten that bit up. So that's the four things you have to do to get it to to zero out. It's a little bit off, but it's close enough. And then what I do is I hold the button on there, which is power. I like to keep it roughly where it should be. If I hold the button down, what I'll show you if I can. Holding the button down, you should see the screen fill up and then the gimbal will align, right? So now the whole thing's in its stabilization mode. So you can see, if I go back, and you see at the moment it's keeping the camera level. So even if I do this, it's keeping the camera level, but it's following the direction that I'm going in. See that? So if I look that way, it's it's sort of catching up with me. It's doing it smoother, but it's catching up with me. If I was to press, so that's got HF written on the screen now. If I press the button, that's lock. So now if I move around, can you see the camera is trying to... So if I put it back on HF, there we go. So now that should be following me. If I get it to look at the camera, right? Now that's in lock mode. So now, even if I move around, you should be seeing that the camera is always looking at you. You see what I mean? So even if I move up or down, or if I was to put it up in the air, or if I bring it down a bit lower, the camera's always trying to face that way. So that's quite good, you know, if you're trying to fix on the subject and you're bouncing around all over the place, it's all good, it's all stable. Um, there is another one, so if I press the button on the back, uh, if I can remember which one it is, is that button? I can't remember what the button is, lock. I think if I hold this button, then one of them, I think that one is, so that one's trying to track with me, you can see that, right, so that it's trying to go around with me. If I suddenly wanted to lock on something, I can hold this button and it goes into lock mode, but that's like a whilst I'm holding the button down. As soon as I let go, it'll go back to tracking with me. So then there is another option, which is AF, so what that's now doing is it's It'll track with me sideways, but the camera will follow me in an upwards direction. So let me do that again. If I can get it off this mode. So that's in lock. Right, so that's in that mode. And again, I can use the little joystick. So this is me to moving the joystick up and down to position the camera. So I want it to look in front of me. If I double tap the mode button, okay, that goes to that mode. So, can you see that the camera is now pitching with me? So if I want to look up in the air, it's following me. And if I wanted to look down at something, it's following me. But it's do again, it's doing it smooth. If I move to the side, you might see this. So as I move down, you can see it's not quite, it's not as if I've got it on a stick, it is following me. So that's quite good, you know, if for some reason you wanted to look up at something and then you were turning around, it's quite good for that. And again, if I hold that button, it locks. So that's now locked again, so I can get that like that. So if I can get it to look at you, so this is in the track of horizontal as well, hold the button down, instantly goes to that lock mode. See that? Now, it hasn't done it yet. But unfortunately, this gimbal's got to go back because it is not working correctly. It seems to be working fine now. You can see if I move around, it's all being nice and smooth and all this sort of stuff. One thing I have found, which is a little bit annoying, is there are hardware stops. Can you see that? So that's where I'm pushing the limit of that axis, and it's like, mm, I don't really know what to do there. So again, if I go that way, see what it's like, mm, not sure what to do. Um, what does happen occasionally is the 
um, pan access, this one here, which makes it twist, goes completely out and it's like, well, I don't know what to do, which is really annoying when you're trying to do a time lapse. So you can set up the time lapse. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, it'll beep. I can move it to somewhere like here, press the button, right? And then, okay, right, there we go. Okay, not quite sure what it's doing there. Let's try that again. Right, okay, so that's now that. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five. Oh no, that's initialization, sorry. Sorry, wrong mode. Four. Four clicks. One, two, three, four. Right, so now that's in the position to where you want me to go. So I want you to go there. Beeps. And then I want you to go over there. All right. And what this will do is it'll spin round. But if I set up a time lapse on this camera now, what it will very slowly do is rotate into that position. Now what I am going to do, I'm going to bail out from this. Right, so what I'm going to do, put it on there. Not sure if you can still see it, but I'm going to go into the app. Now the app connecting to the gimbal is not great. I will say that. Um, it's not perfect. It does. Uh, it is a bit flaky. Um, it's a failure on is the name of the app. So this is what the app looks like. If you can see that. I'm going to connect to the gimbal. It uses the Wi-Fi to connect to it. And now what I can do is I've got like a control panel, which I have a joystick on screen, so if I wanted to I can move it around. Um, I've also I can also change the modes. I can go into the settings. Um, and I can also get it to connect to the GoPro. So the gimbal can, there's a button on the gimbal that allows you to press record. For example on the GoPro so when you're holding it you can just press it start recording stop it you can also go into the settings of the GoPro on the gimbal so you can see what the frame rate is you can change the frame rate if you want to um, change what whether it's in time-lapse mode whether it's in video mode all on the gimbal you don't have to go near the, the camera which is great because obviously the camera's in its stabilized mode at the moment you don't really want to touch it because if you do it's like oh, hang on I've got to, I'm trying to stabilize it don't touch it um, so what I can do on, on my phone is I can use the joystick to move the camera around if I want to, right? But one thing I do find that happens is it suddenly goes, oh, and it's almost as if, so inside the gimbal there'll be motors and encoders. The motors will obviously move the thing. The encoders are there to control. So they will say, okay, I've asked it to move five degrees. Did it move five degrees? And it's a very they'll be like quadrature encoders, whatever it is they're using, but they're very high resolution encoders, and it's if it is if that bit isn't working properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the settings, I'm gonna change the auto rotation. That was that bit where you're talking about the time lapsing, where that rotates on its own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the speed of that. So I can go into it and say, right, for the panning that way, I'm gonna change it so that it takes uh, two minutes to complete a whole turn. And then for the tilting, I'm gonna put it as the same two minutes. So that's quite quick. I may even, just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna set it to 30 seconds. So within 30 seconds, it would have completed its whole cycle from where I started it to where I finished it. So whether or not that's just doing that or whether that's looking that way and looking all the way around. So you should see it move quite quick. So I'm gonna click save. That's gonna save the settings on the gimbal. No longer need the app. It's going to save. New settings saved. There we go. So I no longer need the app. So on here, I can go one, two, three, four on the mode button. That just sets it in its standard place. I'm going to rotate it that way. Press the mode button again. And then I'm going to rotate it that way. And I'm going to tilt the camera like that. When I press it again, it will go to its first position. And so you can see it's if it's you can see this is doing that for some reason it doesn't try and calculate how long it takes for some reason that's going very, I'm not sure why this camera keeps stopping recording 
So for some reason it hasn't actually saved those settings. I set it to 30 seconds to do a pan speed. Hasn't saved it. It's done a tilt. It's done that very quickly, which is one thing I don't quite like. So if I'm saying that I want to do... Oh, there you go. You see that? So it went crazy then. So that was where I was talking about that. Now if I'm trying to do a time lapse, I don't need that. I don't want to have that doing that. So this is now, what mode is this in? I don't know if this is trying to track or if this is still trying to be a thing. Right, okay, so now I believe it's back to track mode. But did you see that? It went, it went crazy. So let's set this again. Oh, see, it's, it's for some reason didn't save. So 60 seconds per turn, save. Now, whether or not it's the app when it communicates with this sort of messes it up slightly. Right, so it's saying 30 seconds per turn on there. 30 seconds per turn on there. We're going to try that again. Right, now I want you to go from there. Okay, and I want you to just go all the way around to there. Okay. So it's going to go to the starting position. And you can see it. I'm not quite sure what the... Now here, look. Can you see? Oh, it's going a bit sideways, a bit to the left. That was not a perfectly smooth action there. Let's get it to do it again. Right. Again, I don't really know what mode this is in. Okay, so it's going to start there. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with the thing there. That's not quite right. Oh, stutter, 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 and stop. It's making a horrendous noise as well. Don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that on the microphone? Oh, I don't know if you guys picked up on that. I've got. I'm actually filming the audio on uh, my microphone going into the PC, so hopefully you guys picked up on that. But right, so. So on the screen, it gives you no indication as to what mode it's currently in. So I don't know if this is in. Right, so I believe this is back into standard gimbal mode. Let's try that one more time. Right, so I want you to start there. And I want you to finish over here. Start there, so this should be doing a very nice smooth rotation. Imagine doing this as a time lapse. But can you see it's stuttering? See that it's not doing a smooth rotation at all. I've had it a lot worse than this. To be honest, this is this is doing okay. But oh, went backwards then. If you're doing a time lapse, that would not work. Might try holding it. I don't know if you. I'm sorry if you guys can't see this, but. Right, so I think that, that was first set. Again, no indication. Um, what I'm going to do now is get it so that it comes around to you. Right. That seems to be quite smooth now. I have got a video of it before, and it was going, uh, it was going crazy. Right, so I believe if I double tap it, that just goes back into gimbal mode, right? So this is just, look, gimbal mode, tracking with me. So, one, two, three, four, beeps. Uh, this time, okay, I'm trying to get it to do it like it's extremities, so I'm gonna get it to point at me. And then I want it to go all the way around. Not touching any of the other axes, I'm just touching the pan one here. Right. So let's see if this is going to do a nice smooth. Oh, that's going backwards. Start, stutter, backwards, start.
just not the sort of thing when you're trying to do a time lapse. Obviously, this is going quite quick. Imagine if you set up a time lapse for eight hours, and then you reviewed the footage, and it had all this went backwards, went forwards, went backwards, went forwards. When you just want a nice, simple pan, you know, imagine doing the skyline, watching the clouds go by, and you're trying to just pan across, and then it's like. Just not acceptable. Right. That should take it back to the start. So I've had it before, I've been holding it and I've been wiggling around, you know. Imagine if you're standing there and you're moving it around. Oh, on the way chair. It joy would it would slightly behave now that it's on camera, wouldn't it? Seems to be, it's very quick, I'll give it that, you know, I'm, I'm running, I'm wiggling this around as if I'm trying to break it. Obviously in normal running mo mo mode, you'd just be walking along, you know, you'd just be doing this sort of stuff. And you wouldn't necessarily be doing this, right? You're not going to be running around whilst it's doing that. It's not as if you're running a marathon with a baton in your hand and you're trying to... I have seen one video of a guy, to be fair. And the cameraman is dancing more than the guy he's, he's trying to film, which looks really funny. So, you know, it's not bad. It can take multiple cameras, it can take phones, you can connect the, the camera to the actual gimbal, I'm not going to bother doing it now. Um, the, the build quality is great. You know, it's tough stuff, it's really nice. Metal, lovely. Really nice, but... For some reason, that access is just not responded. The apps are awful, if I'm honest. We'll just notice as well on there. Can you see? I don't know if you can see it, but it sort of shows a uh, like a view. And as I move this around, the dials on there move. Can you see that? I don't know if you can. I don't know what the focus is like on this camera. Um, but yeah, see, it seems to be responding. But can you see that hardware limit there? sort of hits a limit. There are hardware limits, as in, so this one here can rotate a full 360 degrees and just keep going as much as you want it to go, which is great. You know, that's exactly what you want. You want a full 360. These other ones are not 360. So for example, this one, if I go to there, where is it? There, that's a hardware limit there which why they fitted hardware limited and there look that's a hardware limit I mean granted that's in the way of the lens now but um, also on this one obviously that bit there would clash you see what's doing that and it's like don't know what to do ah it's like I don't know what to do am I supposed to go that way am I supposed to go that way I don't know I'm too close to my limit maybe that is you know that is the limit that's what it's supposed to be so I've had it before, I'll have to put the other video that I've got on my phone of this, and it's just going crazy, and it's just like, it just doesn't know what it's doing, it's just constantly spinning, and just not, not ideal. So, I'm going to send this back, unfortunately, um, I'm going to get another one, because it is very good, you know, build quality, everything else I'm pretty much happy with, the apps are not great, they're rubbish, that, to be honest, um, I may get, like, a dedicated, um, GoPro one, they were a little bit cheaper. I just looked on, you know, um, Amazon. So these, this one was one hundred and seventy nine pounds. Sorry, two hundred and seventy nine pounds. This one was in the UK on Amazon. Um, I've I looked on one earlier. I believe it was one hundred and forty for the DJI Osmo Mobile Two, um, which literally just takes like one of these star clamps, so you can put iPhone, you, you could technically put a camera in it, uh, you know, this tiny little camera I've got here, point and shoot, that would fit, a GoPro would fit in this, sort of, not quite, but that style of fixture, you know, these these type of fixtures, that would easily hold onto a GoPro quite happily, so, so yeah, my review, um, out of 10, I would give it a I'm going to give it as like a seven and a half the, because I'm, I'm really impressed with the build quality. Really nice looking thing. Apps, awful. I swear this camera can only do like 10 minutes of recording at a time. How far am I on in this video? Well, I am to half an hour to be fair. Um, so, 
yeah, the apps are not great. They're awful. Um, and it uses this other app. So it has got things like face tracking and things like that, which sound great. Um, however, it uses this awful app, which all the cheap ones seem to use, like the Smooth. Uh, if you've ever seen the videos on Facebook of the guy uh, holding the, the, the iPhone 1, the Smooth gimbal uses exactly the same app. It's basically a, it's like a face tracking, you know, clever app. I'll give it that. It, I don't know whether it's the communications to the gimbal or whether or not it's that part which messes up. And it seems to be more when you're using an app than it is normally. But I took this on holiday uh, last week. And every time I picked it up, it was just like, nope, can't do anything with it. Real shame. So I just didn't want to take it out. You know, this is when I was just testing it in the at the hotel. And, and uh, I'll show you if I hold this down. So it goes into gimbal mode, pan control. So that I can use the the jog dial there as a as a pan control. And I press it again, I can roll control. So that's that way, that's roll, there you go. And then tilt, which is that way. So yeah, you can use it for that. That's quite, pretty cool. A little bit quicker than using the joystick. We hold it down and then that's into the camera control, so zoom and focus. Which is quite cool, you know, if you wanted to change the focus whilst you were doing something, pretty cool. So yeah, it is good, I'll give it that. This one's got teething problems and the apps are rubbish, but yeah, seven and a half out of 10, cool. And then you just hold the button down and it's like, oh, gone all floppy. Turned off, yeah. So yeah, my name's John. Sorry for doing such a long video, but yeah, I just wanted to raw sort of do this one. Um, yeah, uh, so have a look at my other videos. Um, I do one where, you know, I'm trying to become a YouTuber, so I do like a car chat one, I call it. Um, yeah, hopefully it's gonna develop into something really good. So, and hopefully I can get the audio synced up with the video all right, because I know this video keeps cutting out every like 10 minutes. So we'll uh, see what happens there. Cool. My name's John. Have try and find me on social media. It's at Machine Shop UK uh, on all Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, yeah. Thanks again. Toodaloo. Bye.